Hey, welcome back to the channel. My name is Steve Lund and in this video we're going to talk about what are the top three supplements that I would take for the rest of my life. You know, this hypothetical scenario where you can't take any other supplements and you only take uh, three of them, which ones would those be? Make sure you click a like and subscribe as well for future videos about optimizing your health and performance. Do it! All right, so number one, magnesium. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> magnesium is, uh, yeah, I think one of the most important minerals. It, uh, yeah, governs a ton of uh, processes inside the body in involved in uh, hundreds of reactions and the process of generating ATP itself requires uh, magnesium. It's involved in almost all steps of the way when it comes to energy production, as well as all other things like neurotransmitters, digestion, uh, stress management, insulin sensitivity, and those kinds of things. So what are the benefits of magnesium? I'm just going to list them. You know, yeah, it's is almost like everything. <laughs> everything requires magnesium. It regulates stress, improves your heart health, uh, better sleep, reduces anxiety, supports blood sugar levels, helps with migraines, uh, relieves constipation, strengthens bones, increases energy, improves immunity, lowers pain, protects the brain, and a bunch of other things <laughs> that aren't listed here as well. The biggest, you know, consequence of not having enough magnesium, in my opinion, would be cardiovascular disease and uh, heart problems. So if you don't have enough magnesium, then uh, you're going to offset the balance between sodium and calcium, which will raise your blood, pr blood pressure and also promote uh, tissue calcification. So uh, excess calcium in relation to magnesium will uh, promote this calcification and uh, atherosclerosis as a result of that, which is, you know, obviously bad. Uh, other things that will happen uh, will also be uh, metabolic syndrome. You, uh, you'll become insulin resistant. You have high cholesterol. And uh, yeah, eventually that will uh, increase the risk of uh, cardiovascular disease quite a lot. You also uh, damage the endothelial, uh, so this uh, basically smooth layering of the blood vessels, and that will become uh, dysfunctional and uh, that will co promote uh, thrombosis, atherosclerosis, and just the that's just the uh, you have to like deal with oxidative stress and inflammation that requires magnesium as well. And if you don't have enough magnesium then your antioxidant defenses are not going to work that optimally. And yeah, you're at a higher risk of just, you know, experiencing damage. Gonna have a bad time. There are a lot of studies that finding this association between magnesium intake and cardiovascular disease. And uh, the less magnesium you consume, the higher risk of calcification there is. And so this study, 2014, magnesium intake is inversely associated with coronary artery calcification. And uh, you can see at uh, the intakes of 250, 300, the uh, in increased risk of uh, calcification is much higher compared to 400 and 450. So the RDA itself is around 400, uh, 420, somewhere around there. And uh, yeah, generally, the less you consume, the uh, higher risk of your calcification is, which is, you know, bad for heart disease. The problem with magnesium and all the other minerals is that uh, the amount of it has been decreasing in our food uh, and soils uh, quite a lot because of mostly like soil erosion, pesticides, herbicides, those things that deplete the soil from those minerals. And as a result of that, the food is also uh, quite low in uh, those minerals. And that is also one of the reasons why people, uh, like why magnesium is such a common deficiency, like 50 to 60% of people are deficient in magnesium. And uh, yeah, it's just like a big problem. The foods that have the most magnesium are all these uh, seeds, pumpkin seeds, almonds, uh, as well as uh, spinach, black beans, potatoes, salmon, uh, and uh, yeah, they do have magnesium. The problem may be that uh, yeah, like who who eats a bunch of pumpkin seeds, <laughs> who eats a bunch of almonds, maybe like a few of them, uh, maybe like a little bit, but not in crazy amounts. And even right, like with spinach, you know, 0 0.5 cups is 78 milligrams. And uh, in order to get the 420 milli 420 milligram RDA, then yeah, you would need to consume quite a lot of cups of spinach, which is you know obviously quite difficult. <laughs> That's why I think uh, taking a magnesium supplement is uh, something that if I were to choose what which supplement should I take then on a deserted island, then yeah, the magnesium is probably one of them. And uh, the best uh, brand out there, uh, in my opinion, is uh, Magnesium Breakthrough. So they have uh, all like the main kind of uh, best uh, seven forms of uh, magnesium for the heart, for the gut and uh, the, the general health. So yeah, this one is the best one, in my opinion, you because, you know, you may be getting magnesium that is good for the heart, but if you're lacking it in the intestines or you're lacking it in the brain, for example, then uh, you still may experience some negative symptoms of magnesium deficiency. So this kind of uh, prevents that because you get all the different types of it in, uh, in some amounts. If you want to check out Magnesium Breakthrough, then I have a discount link in the description. 
and uh, yeah you can check it out so good supplement number two is a glycine which is another one of my favorites it's a pretty damn awesome it's pretty damn healthy for you and it also has a uh, quite a lot of health benefits reason number one why you may want to supplement with a glycine is that it promotes glutathione so glutathione is the main master antioxidant and it protects against uh, liver damage in improves your immune system reduces fatty liver supports detoxification dna repair fight free radicals, anti-aging effects, so it's a very uh, important uh, defense system and uh, glycine helps to uh, boost that. Reason number two is that glycine helps with sleep, it lowers your body temperature, which then uh, helps to facilitate the production of melatonin, it uh, relaxes your muscles and uh, also prevents your body from over overheating uh, during the night, which is, you know, good. Higher body temperature and higher uh, room temperatures themselves uh, tend to be uh, associated with a worse sleep quality. And, you know, sleep is obviously very important. So uh, glycine is uh, one of the best, uh, let's say, evening uh, supplements that uh, I take as well. Reason number three is that it protects the heart. So even even through glutathione, it can protect the heart. But uh, besides that, it also protects against uh, lipid peroxidation, lowers oxidative stress, improves blood flow, reduces inflammation. And yeah, it's generally good for, uh, again, preventing oxidative damage that you may experience. Reason number four is that it lowers blood sugar. So glycine actually raises insulin, which uh, then helps to shuttle glucose into the cells. So actually, because it raises insulin, it is a good thing in, in that sense, because if you don't produce insulin or you produce it in adequate, inadequate amounts, then you have you know, high, high blood sugar and that will be you know, bad for diabetes. Diabetes. Reason number five is that uh, glycine balances methionine. So methionine is, another, is an essential amino acid and uh, it has some benefits with you know, the methylation cycle, but excess methionine has been found to uh, be associated with uh, accelerated aging and inflammation. So you want to balance your methionine intake with glycine. Methionine you get from uh, muscle meat, basically, and glycine from uh, these uh, tendon meats, jello, gelatin, and uh, skin, uh, chicken skin, uh, fish skin, those things have more glycine. And the studies have found that uh, the dietary glycine supplementation, it can mimic the lifespan extension that happens usually with uh, restricting methionine in at least like animals. So it's uh, with, with glycine, you can basically mimic the effects of, a glyc of a methionine restriction on longevity. So you don't have to basically restrict the, uh, your, your, at least that much, you don't have to restrict the amount of methionine you consume that much if you balance it out with uh, glycine. Reason number six is that uh, glycine makes up collagen. Like I said, one third of collagen is a glycine and you know, collagen itself helps with uh, wound healing repairs or repairs uh, tendon and ligaments and uh, also slows down the skin aging so your skin is made of uh, protein as well as uh, collagen natural foods of glycine are tender meats chicken drumsticks uh, gelatin fish uh, bones uh, fish skin those kinds of things uh, i do eat let's say those kinds of foods every once in a while i eat uh, gelatin on a regular basis i eat uh, some fish skin um, and maybe some chicken drumsticks the tendon meats not that often uh, but i do have them every once in a while so that's why I think that uh, taking a glycine supplement uh, is also like a quick fix and an easy fix. Uh, if I were to have to take one supplement out of the three, then a glycine would be one of them because of the same, primarily because of the, um, the effects on uh, the methionine restriction and uh, glutathione and just the like anti-aging uh, compound. You have aged, uh... Supplement number three is going to be vitamin K. Uh, so uh, vitamin K is uh, quite a good vitamin, it's a fat soluble vitamin and uh, the effects or the functions of vitamin K have to mostly do with the cardiovascular disease again and uh, bones so uh, what, what vitamin K does is essentially regulate your calcium levels in the body and helps to direct things like vitamin D and calcium into the bones where they where the most use that uh, whereas instead of keeping them in the bloodstream so excess calcification, excess calcium and excess vitamin D that that doesn't get end up in the bones uh, that can you know cause calcification and atherosclerosis because of that. Uh, whereas uh, vitamin K ensure vitamin K two specifically ensures that uh, it goes there where it's needed. Other benefits again yeah like prevents calcification and is also essential for uh, blood clotting. So this is again mostly for uh, cardiovascular disease uh, risk management. Foods that have vitamin K are both uh, plants and animals. You get vitamin K one from uh, mostly leafy greens and vitamin K2 from uh, the cheeses, egg yolks, um, those kinds of liver and uh, organ meats, as well as a natto, which is this uh, fermented soybean dish. Uh, that's actually one of the highest source of K2. And uh, the K2 is more of this uh, more bioactive form. And uh, K2 actually is more related to the uh, calcification and uh, blood clotting and things like that, the uh, cardiovascular effects, whereas the K1 is uh, 
for uh, the bones. Um, let's say it doesn't have like a lot of the cardiovascular effects, but yeah, ideally you still want to uh, consume uh, both. How much vitamin K you need? You don't need like a ton of uh, vitamin K2 every day. Uh, men need about 120 micrograms, women 90 micrograms. Uh, but in my opinion, um, it's uh, still worthwhile to get like 200 micrograms uh, a day and it's not going to be any problem. Uh, so that's why, yeah, like uh, I would include a vitamin K2 supplement, uh, NK7 preferably uh, on a regular basis if I were to choose, okay, which one, which supplement uh, should I take for the rest of my life? Choose wisely. All right, that's it for this video. Let me know in the comments which ones uh, did you choose, which three supplements would you take if you had to choose uh, for the rest of your life. Other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click a like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.